he uh, was studying the Korean immigration history. So he told the, to my friend, he told my friend, so uh, <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. So in 1905, so 1,000 and more the Korean so people moved to Mexico and they uh, you know, worked at the haciendas, the plantations, the Anakin plantation in the Yucatan Peninsula, but they, they were not able to return to Korea because uh, Korea was, uh, uh, was occupied by Japan and uh, you know, the nation was disappeared. So, uh, and 1910, the Mexican Revolution uh, began. So, so, in that chaos, they, some of them moved to the northern Guatemala and they built a small nation in the jungle. So, so new Korea, kind of so new Korea. So, uh, that is very, you know, so fantastic story. So, but he didn't buy that stone because uh, it sounded so too, you know, fantastic, uh, too, you know, so too great. So, but uh, but I did some research so in the, the library, so I found some clues. So that story would be um, the true story. So I, you know, so I. I flew to Mexico and Yucatan Peninsula and Guatemala and I began to write the first chapter of the Black Flower in uh, so Antigua, Antigua in Guatemala. So, it's, it's funny, I, I, I do recall um, one of the questions that I had wanted to ask was about this itinerant lifestyle of your service. Um, I, I met uh, uh, Ha last year when my book came out at a reading in uh, New York City. And um, we, we had a meal together, and I, I could never forget what uh, he had said to me at that time. He looked at me and he said, you're now a writer, but a professional writer, you will be lonely. <laughs> and I thought, oh gosh, <laughs> it's been two weeks into I started, I learned I'll be lonely for the rest of my life, what does this mean? And um, I, I learned in the last year and a half what that, in some ways, that means or that entails as you're traveling all around the world or jumping around and I've spent very little time in school um, for that reason. And um, it, uh, I, I wonder, what is that like for you? Because you've spent so much of your time overseas and even when you're here, you're on the move all the time. Um, how has that uh, both uh, changed your work and, and your life? loneliness because I see that in your work. Solitude is a is a preoccupation. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I remember the the, the the face of Chris uh, when I you know <laughs> told the, the secret to Chris, you will be lonely. And uh, so you know yes yeah, so I, I want you to you know so cheer her off but <laughs> but yeah yeah but I believe, yeah, yes, uh, being a writer, so the means, uh, you know, became to become to become a lonely guy, so a lonely the person. So, yeah, yeah. So I live in the Busan now. So there, um, there is no friends in Busan. So the <laughs> way, you know. The light makes a phone call to me, so, so yeah, but, but I, you know, accept. Yeah, I accept. Not only accept, in some ways you've created it uh, by voluntarily moving to Busan. I, I think you've talked about this before too, and I found that really interesting. Yeah, yes, I hate people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but, you know, the, the writer, the job of the job of the writer, a writer is uh, you know making a world, so for his uh, or her own the world. So I believe the writer should live uh, with them. 
so my characters and, and in my world. So sometimes I have some, some trouble, so you know, living with people and uh, hang, hanging out with people. So 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 I I, I tell them so uh, I charge myself with you know kind of so like kind of battery. So social battery. Uh, uh, battery so that it uh, doesn't last uh, two hours or three hours. <laughs> so I and then I had to I had to go back to my walk, go back to my world, go back to my characters, go back to my you know, novels. So so now you see you see my uh, very socialistic ego and <laughs> so or as avatar. Of, of, of Kim so, real Kim Yama is walking on his desk, so it, this is my avatar, and uh, very look friendly and uh, <laughs> smiling. This is not me. <laughs> Actually, speaking of characters, uh, when you speak of avatar or mask, the first story I read of yours uh, was Doi uh, Umi. Uh, which was uh, um, anthologized uh, and it won the uh, Isang Munaksang, the Isang Literary Prize, I think in 2003. Yes. Um, and I was intrigued because uh, the main character is a, a sleazy playboy film director, quite comical character as well. Um, and in the first character, the main character in I Have uh, the Right to Destroy Myself, that is um, uh, in some ways, uh, you know, not it's very um, a suspect as well. <laughs> but then, at the end, there's this other great total range and uh, personalities and backgrounds that have emerged in uh, the, the the next ten years of your work. That's kind of an astonishing uh, range. And but I'm wondering, you as a writer, there, there's something secret there that's tying all these characters together. Or there's reasons why certain characters are more interesting, and you become obsessed, and you want to live with certain characters longer than others. And what you know? Tell us something about that. What attracts you to, you know, this these particular characters? Uh, yeah. Um, so I I believe so everyone is special. So everyone is weird. So, <laughs> uh, so everyone has some weird aspect in their mind. So their the acts. So I just watch them. So. Uh, in 2003, uh, from uh, from 2001 to 2004, I worked with uh, the the film industry. Uh, I I wrote some film scripts and uh, I worked with them. So you yeah, uh, know, I watched them and uh, uh, I don't know. So. I can say, um, yes, that people say that you are not in your novels and in your show stories, there are many characters and there's a, a big spectrum of the characters. So I don't know how I you know, to pick the characters. They just come to me. So, yeah. But I really like uh, to watch people and to talk to them. So. Uh, let me tell a story. So, so ten years ago, so nine years ago, so my the computer, the desktop computer, uh, was broken. It's broken. So uh, the computer guy so visited my so house, and uh, he and he and I so were talking about his life and his wife and his sons and so he he so wanted to return his uh, the office so he told the he told his boss the lie so uh, this desktop computer so was uh, totally broken so I needed more time so yeah uh, so I he and I just uh, were talking the everything of his life and how he became a, uh, you know, what can I say? Uh, a repairman. A repairman. And uh, so how much he loved, he loved his uh, job. And so 
Uh, I, I have many experiences of, like that. So when I meet a fisherman, fisherman, so, or some repairman, some the cable guys, so, <laughs> and the taxi drivers. So yeah, so that I think so I I have a, a few the talents of the wires, but the, the one thing I I really the one thing I really like is uh, talking. I'm making people talk to me. So, for a long time. So, that is my story. Right. I wonder how many people have lost their jobs as a result. I want to talk just a bit about uh, your short story uh, called Kurim Jarab Hans Hanai. Um, the English title is The Man Who Sold uh, His Shadow. It's up on Words Without Borders, the site of uh, translations from around the world. Um, it's, it, it, we, I mentioned the word solitude before, and this is probably one of the loneliest stories I've ever read in my life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, 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 you know, I, I've read it several times, actually, and each time I read it, it, it quietly, slowly breaks my heart. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in both the story's origins as well, but more, the, the pattern of images in the story. It starts with a bird and a shadow. There's a man and woman hiding in the bushes, uh, a man and fire. Um, there's others. I won't give the story away. I won't spoil it. Um, but I'm interested in how the images are important to you in shaping your work. I see it again in the book. Um, I'm translating Kim uh, latest novel. And again, I see that preoccupation with the image and how the image surprises us much later in very um, in unusual ways. Yes, uh, yeah, the story is uh, so you know, my, my favorite, the short story, too. So, yeah. and, uh, and the story started from an image. So, Chris, uh, you just uh, so right. So, you know that the, 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 the LP album of Pink Floyd? Floyd. I, I, I forgot the, the, the name of the, the album. What is that? Dark Side of the Moon? Uh, Dark Side of the Moon? No, the guy is. Uh, Pun Fire. <laughs> Oh yeah, wish you were here. Oh, wish you were, wish you were here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's right. So, yeah, uh, when I uh, wrote the story, so I, I just uh, so, so the album, so the, the album is my wife's uh, favorite album. So she really uh, loves the King Boy. So yeah, so I the story uh, started from the image and. Uh, so, uh, let me tell the background of the so, uh, childhood, the death, the real death. So, I had a Catholic so, background. So, when I was born, so my mother and my father, uh, what is that? Yongsen? Seren? Yongsen? Baptized? Yeah, baptized me. So, uh, I had so I have a Catholic name, so my name is Antonio. No. <laughs> so I'm uh, Yoha Antonio Kim. So, so my 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 aunts and my uncles told me when I was baby, so Antonio, Antonio. So I thought that was my name. So my family has a very strong, uh, you know, Catholic background. So when I was uh, the high school student, I wanted to be uh, the monk, uh, Francisco, Francisco, Franciscan, Franciscan monk. So, uh, in summer vacation, so I would uh, visit the uh, Frances Franciscan uh, school, monastery, monastery, and I stayed there in seven days or ten days with my friends. So. Uh, so some of my friends uh, so became the monk or the father, priest, priest but uh, I was expelled by uh, some monk because uh, too talkative. And <laughs> yeah, so 
So one day is uh, a monk, uh, you know, uh, called me, uh, brought me to his office, and uh, he told me, "You uh, are not the kind of you know, people who can stay in the, in the, in the monastery so for your life." So and uh, so on. You know, that kind of my experience, you know. Someday you you went back to or go back to the father and say, uh, he a writer because of you. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> he chased I, you out. I really like their the clothes. Yeah. Well, I just, <laughs> it, it's very you know very you know comfortable, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't you know want to go back to the monastery. It's too boring. You know. briefly about the stories as well as the novels. And I want to go to, back to something that she, uh, the writer Chang Rayleigh had once said, uh, the writers are essentially short story writers or novelists at heart. Um, he gave an example of the, uh, Tobias Wolf, who he said was essentially a short story writer even though he's won prizes for his memoirs and novels. Do you consider yourself more of a story writer or a novelist? What form attracts you most? Uh, Actually, I don't agree so, uh, with these words. So, uh, writer is essentially so can be a short story writer or novelist. So, um, I don't know. I don't know much about the American the tradition, but in Korea, many writers uh, do you know, write uh, short stories and the novels simultaneously. I think he means yeah. what's what you consider your greatest strength, like at heart. What is the uh, form that's most natural to you? Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, so my audience, the Korean audience, uh, prefer my short stories. So, and uh, my short story collections uh, sells more, more than the novels. It, 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 it's not common even in Korea, but, but in my heart, so I want to be a novelist, uh, not, uh, not short story writers. So I think so writing short stories is, you know, looks like a you know, hobby to me. So sometimes I, 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 I wrote uh, my short stories just uh, so one day one day or two days, I, I write very fast. When I write short stories, so I write really fast. So, and I, you know, I revise it so many, many times. But for the, for the first draft, I really you know, work fast. But when I write novels, it, it, so it, it, it's totally different. So I you know, think about so many things. The characters and the plots, and uh, and uh, I I do research, blah blah blah. But when I write short stories, so I I I, I don't do you know research. I just uh, write uh, the fast. So so just like uh, so the TED talk, right. right? So. Yeah. I said it's funny because when I think of myself, I've seen that I, I feel like I'm much more of a natural novelist, but I really wish I were a real story writer in some ways. Oh, really? and, you know, I started with a story collection, but of course everything exploded over 50 pages and then I had to throw it all away. So I think there's some kind of natural orientation that we always want to be what we're not in some ways. Um, a, talking, I want to go to translation actually, not of your work per se, but um, your uh, translation work itself. Uh, Kim Yong has actually recent, uh, not well, somewhat recently, four years ago, has translated uh, The Great Gatsby um, into Korean, and it's now number two on the bestseller list. <laughs> but uh, the act of uh, translation, um, of course, is going, especially from Korean to English or English to Korean, transforms a work so much because you're reversing the order of the sentences, essentially, and reconstructing a voice and a tone and a character. Um, and when you look at your translations of your own work, uh, these 
these books here, and you may have looked at parts of it, no matter how good a translator you have, you're going to see your work altered. And in what ways do you think your work has changed in the translation? What are you less satisfied with? Or how do you think your work suffers through translation? What gets lost in translation? Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, in 2003, so I heard the two high school uh, boys were talking so in the bookstores. So they, uh, they were talking about the Great Gatsby, so the, the Great Gatsby in Korean, the translated version. So the two high school guys were talking Holy shit! So this novel is so boring. <laughs> so, so I, I was shocked, and so, uh, so I checked the translated versions of uh, the Korean versions of Great Gatsby. So I found that uh, so the translations were not good enough to the, the high school students enjoy, and so. I, I, I didn't think the Great Gatsby is not that boring, and uh, so that is romance. That, that is the romance story, and uh, yeah. So that's why I you know so began to translate the Great Gatsby. So uh, in Korean versions, Nick and uh, Daisy at that time. So in the Korean version. So they speak in Chondemma. Mm -hmm. so how can I say in English? For formal Korean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. High register Korean? Yeah, yeah. Nick and Daisy is cousins, but they you know, speak in uh, the Chondemma in Korean. And uh, so, so that kind of things, so, uh, there were that kind of things in the translations. So I tried to, so, oh, Trying to make uh, the younger version of Great Gatsby, so so I, I did it. So I finished it in two thousand and nine, uh, and luckily the Baz Luhrmann <laughs> 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 made a film. So uh, now uh, the Great Gatsby was uh, 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 so my Great Gatsby so is on the best seller list. So where I haven't so <laughs> get the, the, the length, so so I haven't uh, so entered entered into the top ten of the bestseller list in Korea, but the Great Gatsby of my <laughs> my translation is uh, now uh, the number two, second or third, and the, so uh, how how lucky I am, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so and uh, I, I think uh, the translation uh, have not changed my style. So because uh, the, the Great Gatsby is my only translation, and the story, uh, the novel is very short. Actually, I meant when um, uh, uh, your own books were translated. Um, do you feel as if something? If do you feel as like things get lost in your own work uh, when they're translated? Uh, actually, uh, I. I, I, I don't read my translations. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. People wouldn't believe my word, but because uh, you know, I, I write in Korean. In Korean, uh, the, and I revise, revise it so again and again, so many times. So, yeah, I, I, I don't want to read my novel in English or in French or, but. So when I was in New York City, and in, in the United States, uh, sometimes I have to read my novel in English. So as you heard, so uh, so I you know I did the practice to read uh, my novel in other languages like uh, English, but that's not you know common. So uh, I I just believe my editor and my translator is. Uh, that's all I can do. So, uh, yes, yes, I choose uh, good 
I try to choose, I try to be the good editor and the good translator and the good literary agent and so I, I don't do anything so beyond the, the, the choice. So, yeah. Last question, I mean, not the last question today, sorry. Uh, the last question about translation, though. Um, what do you think are some differences between a writer's and a translator, uh, a writer's approach to translation and in academics? Because they're both in the States, but particularly in Korea, uh, many academics are actually doing translations of some of the great classics as well as the contemporary literature. And uh, I just read yesterday, the day before yesterday, I had a huge row with a very famous Korean professor who wouldn't allow me to change a word of his translation in a poem that he had both misinterpreted, uh, condensed, and used a very formal diction in, in a, a place where it didn't require that. And he said, you can't touch it, not a word. <laughs> And I, and I wonder what your experience has been when you look at all the works in Korea, they, I mean, they read so much translated literature. I wonder, um, you know, what do you think of those translations done by writers like Chong Yong Moon versus uh, professors and academics? Korean culture by default. 
뭐 재미있는 사례가 하나 있는데 옛날에 빅토르 위고가 빅토르 위고, the French the writer, so translated in translated Shakespeare into French, but his translations were very bad. So, so there are many there were many you know, misunderstandings of uh, the English because Victor Hugo were not was not uh, good at uh, speaking English. The French people so prefer the Victor Hugo's Shakespeare. So they they said we need so we need a beautiful the French. So so that is that is that can be a, a, a kind of extreme, you know, extreme case. But I think that is the fate of translation. So, so every translation, you know, uh, lost, lost it, lost, I lost, uh, I lost something. Yeah. So that is the fate. So, uh, we have to accept the, that most, I think. As you already know, I'm a huge fan of your pop, uh, podcast, um, and uh, there's a, quite a few um, moments or books in the in your podcast when you talk about uh, uh, poetry collections and how poets know how to see, you know, the power of observation. And that really, um, I, I thought about your work uh, when um, I listened to this podcast because I I could be wrong, but I do see this growing kind of ability to see things in a different way and to describe them to make it new for us in the way that maybe your first book didn't reflect as much. And so there's this growth um, uh, there. And I'm wondering what other uh, lessons uh, or what you've learned from reading, you know, from a life of reading, from other fiction uh, writers and poets. What do you consider the lessons you've taken? Uh, so actually, I was inspired by uh, the New Yorker fiction podcast. So did you do you hear that? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, that is really good. Uh, the the podcast by uh, Deborah Deborah, yeah, the fiction editor of uh, the New Yorker. So uh, so I wanted to make a so a podcast like that. So. At that time, in 2009 and 2010, so there was uh, so no podcast culture in Korea. So the people so say, uh, so my podcast so, so might be a, so the first you know, so podcast uh, in Korea. So, uh, First good podcast, I mean, so, <laughs> so before my podcast, uh, so almost every podcast is uh, the, you know, the, the missionary podcast by a priest and uh, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, but, uh, but I, I got to know, so making podcast is not easy, you know, so. I had to invite other the fiction writers to my home or to my office, but it's not easy to uh, some. I have to pay something, so okay, let's read. So <laughs> by myself, so I just read the some of the novels and some of the short stories. So people, yeah, you know, people really like so my podcast because uh, my podcast is very sleepy. <laughs> so people, people emailed me, oh, your podcast they helped me to sleep well. <laughs> but okay, okay, but so it can be an inception, you know. So when you sleep, so you you know will dream my so Kim Young Ha and in your dreams, so uh, you, you know uh, you will buy my book in the stories or uh, in the sleepy mode. So. <laughs> you know, kidding. <laughs> and so I think that the reading other fiction writers' uh, the works is really good for me. So I think uh, that these days people read the novels and uh, other the literary works so fast. So, but reading in 
also in reading that, what about that? Reading aloud, reciting. Uh, reading aloud is a very traditional way of reading. In 17th centuries and uh, 16th centuries and the Middle Age and uh, other, you know, so like old age. Uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. reading aloud is a very traditional way of reading and good, a really good way of reading. So we have to read the novel very slowly, very slowly, and uh, and make, so when I make so whenever I make as uh, every episode of the podcast, I have to read my favorite novels again and again and very slowly and slowly. So I found many interesting and intriguing things uh, so in their novels and their short stories, so which I had not so found when I so read it first. So, uh, so I, I really want to recommend you to uh, read your favorite novels and the short stories aloud to the again and again. So, uh. I think the wonderful thing about the podcast as well is not just the, the orations and the introduction to this great world of literature, but also the privilege of hearing a writer think deeply about these books and aspects of the books. I found it both very inspiring, but also a way of learning as well, and thinking about you know, this, not, these mouthful of words. Um, and uh, lastly, um, I, any future projects that you're willing to share with this group, or um, you know, our thoughts about how you're changing, or you see yourself changing as a writer, and uh, by default as a person? Uh, so my next project? You Whatever you're willing to share. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, now I'm I'm finishing my uh, the sixth novel, so it will be out in this summer. The very short uh, fiction, so like uh, so maybe shorter than this. I have to write this for myself. This is very short novella. So, but my this novel. So what I'm working on, that I'm working on, is very short and uh, novel is about the serial killer. Serial killer. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, you can expect. Uh, yes, yeah, so I. Yeah, I sometimes adopt the very genre, genre things. Elements of, genre. Uh, genre, yeah, elements of genre novels, so uh, as I did in the Yuri Paul is calling you, or uh, I have to write this for myself. But you know, I, you know, adapt the elements of genre novels. But I, you know, the massaging, the massaging in other ways. So yeah, I really like this novel. So I, I fell in love. So this uh, my sixth novel. So you will, you can read the novel in this summer. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sounds like yeah. it'll be a very busy summer for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, it will be your turn. <laughs> yeah. It's showing. Take a break. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh, we're gonna take.